majority of those seated here are not ready to get married. However, this topic remains relevant. And I will tell you why it's very, very relevant. It's never too young to teach the truth. Hello, somebody. It's never too early to teach the truth. Because we don't want our youth to learn from mistakes. Many of our youth have strayed and entered into wrong relationships and are already making a shipwreck of their futures because they have not been taught the truth. It's never too early to learn the truth. In this paper, the phrase is used in the context of two Christian youth, one a male and one a female. I have to put that immediately. Because anything we say in the context of evangelical Christianity, any relationship has to be between a male and a female, which is part of what my pastor was talking about. Look at all of the abuses of family life. In fact, the governments of the world have teamed up together and have decided to destroy God's concept. I think about a month ago, I, I live in Guarandoc behind Air Force Base. About a month ago, a gay couple uh, were discovered in our area and they married. So you think this is news? It is not. Satan is fighting hard against the church and one of the most important fabric of the church that Satan is attacking is the institution of marriage and is giving new, new definition of what marriage should be. Yesterday there was a wedding in Equa Seminary Church and I preached at the, at the wedding. And I was making an example. See, I, I, I'm older than many of you here. There may be some older than me I don't know, but I'm older than many of you here. When we were younger and at your respective ages, if a young girl gets pregnant outside marriage, the family feels shame. They will not look for a relation in Meduguri, Abi, and she will go there and go and give birth there so that nobody knows her story. Am I correct? Do you know that right now, even your relations in Maiduguri, their own children too are getting pregnant, so there's nobody who is going to collect your own. So now everybody is keeping his own day. Because the person who wants to send your own child that got pregnant out of wedlock too, already has his own too, struggling with it. And it's no longer news. It's just, okay, it's a social accident. It's not, it's not fornication, it's what? Social Hey, beloved of God is still fornication. Oh. Hello? It is what? Fornication. It's not social accident. We can talk about this because we must talk about a male and a female who are at the point of starting a journey called marriage. Let me tell you the other very, very important reason that this topic is extremely relevant to this, to this discussion. And you look at some people here and their ages are young. It's also relevant. Because studying the Bible, you find out that the Bible passages we use to do marital counseling are still the same Bible passages we use to do premarital counseling. Am I correct? Because the Bible recognizes that if you teach the youth the right orientation to marriage before they enter into marriage, then they can easily enter marriage well guided. That's why the pastors that will join will say, marriage should not be entered into ill-advisedly. What we have today are people who do not understand what marriage is, are people who have the wrong approaches to marriage, yet they come before the pastors and they are joined in wedding without the right guidance to what marriage is. And that's why 
even in the church today, you hear of divorce among Christians. Hello? You hear of separation among Christians. Do you know that even in the church today, sadly, very, very sadly, you hear of people who have been married for 30 years and they are divorcing and they are Christians. Because the proper guidance at the point of entry was not addressed. So to address it even when you are young and to give us the biblical principles of preparing for marriage is correct. To have and to hold. Let me also quickly add something to you. Why is this important? Now, first thing you must know is that marriage is a spiritual gift. Hello? Hello, somebody. Turn to your partner, turn to the person sitting next to you and say, marriage is a spiritual gift. I know you will not believe now. I know you won't believe because if I ask you to list spiritual gifts, you'll be listening, uh, uh, speaking in tongues, Abby, a word of wisdom, Abby. you'll be listing uh, 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 miracles. Abby. Am I correct? Okay. Should I show you in the Bible that marriage is a spiritual gift? Should I show you in the Bible that marriage is a spiritual gift? Okay, fine. Thank you. Can somebody go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7? Can somebody go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7? Verse 7. I want somebody to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 7. Who has seen it so that you read? Then you tell me whether marriage is a gift from God and so it's a spiritual gift or not. Read now. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Gift from who? Gift from who? Okay. One has. Continue now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Please sit down, my sister. I wish everybody was single like me. But each one has his own. From who? So singleness is a gift from. And marriage is a gift from. And any gift from God is a spiritual gift. True or false? Answer now. If God gave you the gift of marriage and you say it's not a spiritual gift, what is it? It's a demonic gift. Answer now. And do you know that God will judge you for how you use that gift? Because it's God that gave you a home. Hello. Okay, let me put it on that way. Can I put it also that marriage is a spiritual pursuit? Hello. Can I also tell you that marriage is a spiritual pursuit? First Peter chapter 3. Somebody quickly open uh, First Peter chapter 3. I want to lay some certain foundations. You take certain things for granted. You ignore the power and the presence of God in basic things that you take for granted. You think marriage is an ordinary thing everybody enters into? It's a gift. Some have the gift of singleness. Some have the gift of marriage. And it is from who? God. And for me, any gift from God is a spiritual... Okay, maybe for you it's not. Oh. But for me, it's from who? From God. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Who is reading? Who is reading First Peter chapter 3, verse 7? Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's okay. Listen to this. Listen. Husbands, treat your wives with consideration as a fellow heir of salvation. Is that what your Bible says? Answer me now. So your wife and husband and wife are joint heirs of salvation. Am I correct? Is that what the Bible says? Okay. Is it also true that 1 Corinthians chapter 3 tells us 
cause us fellow heirs with God? Hello? Are we as Christians fellow heirs with God? Answer now, please. Are we fellow heirs with God? Okay. Romans 8.17 says we are co-heirs with Christ. Am I correct? Am I correct? And between you and I, are we fellow workers of the truth? As, as brothers and sisters, are we fellow workers of the truth? And then the Bible says in a marriage, husband and wife are joint heirs of salvation. The same language the Bible will use for your relationship with God in ministry, the same language the Bible will use for your relationship with Christ in ministry, and the same language the Bible will use your, for your relationship with your fellow workers in the ministry, he uses for husband and wife. True or false? So is marriage a spiritual gift or not? Answer now. Because the language of ministry is what God uses to describe marriage. He didn't use the language of ordinary living. You are co heirs of salvation. You are joint heirs with Christ. And you are co-workers of the truth. Before you meet with a sister, you were pursuing heaven. That sister too, before she met you, she was pursuing heaven. Now that you married her, should she backside and go to hell? And you say your marriage is not a spiritual pursuit? Is iron not supposed to sharpen even in marriage? Is your iron supposed to sharpen only the irons outside of your marriage? If your Christian life does not make your wife a better Christian, what's the purpose of your Christianity? Hello, somebody. Am I making some sense this morning? But quickly, let's go back to our own focus. The topic is acceptable when one considers the historical Jewish views of the continuum between friendship, courtship, and engagement, and marriage. Do you know that in the Bible, the Bible does not separate courtship from marriage? How many of you remember the story of Joseph and Mary? Joseph and Mary were not yet married, but they were engaged. Hello? Am I, am I correct? The Bible looks at the same principles of engagement with the principles of marriage. That's why when Mary was found pregnant, what did Joseph say he was going to do? He was going to divorce her. Because already they had entered a covenant to get married in future. So the same principles of faithfulness in marriage are expected in courtship. Hello, somebody. Listen now. The same principles, when you, you, know, you, know, you say, when I marry, I will be faithful. Now that you are not married, you are not faithful, I cannot trust you that when you marry, you will be faithful. Some of you think that some of you think that when you marry, you will stop sexual immorality. It's not that I'm a youth that I'm engaged in sex, uh, sexual immorality. When I marry, I will stop. It's a lie. Marriage does not cure sexual immorality. Otherwise, we will not catch some married men still sleeping around. Marriage is not a cure. You know where the cure for sexual immorality is? It's your relationship with God. So whether you are single or married, immorality is immorality. It doesn't matter whether you are single or married. Your singleness is not a license for evil. And those are some of the challenges we must pick up in the church. Singleness is not a license for evil. Let me say one more thing. Let's, 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 um, usually, what ages do people marry? Don't worry, there's no particular age. But let's work with a, a timetable for ourselves. Usually, what ages do people marry? Let's use 24 to 30. Is that a safe time? Let's, do you agree that we use 24 to 30? Okay. As a group, let's agree on 24 to 30. It can be a little younger. It can be a little above. But let's use a, a broad chart, 24 to 30. Now, God permitting, and there's no debt, there's no uh, short life. Can we also use that we can live between 70 and 90? Hello, Abby? 
Now listen to this. Which means if you marry at the age of 30 and God gives you grace to live to be 90, which means you have lived in marriage for 60 years. Beloved of God, something you will spend 60 years doing, you better prepare well. Because that will take the larger part of your life. That's why we don't joke with preparation in marriage. It's not after you marry, you start learning. You're supposed to learn before you enter. So even if you... So, so imagine somebody that marries at the age of 22 and lives to be 90, which means that person has had to live in marriage for 74 years. You actually was a single person only for 22 years. Which one do you want to pay attention to? And you can make mistakes as a single person that will affect 74 years of your, the rest of your life. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. It is possible in your days of singleness, the first 24 years before you marry, to make plenty of mistakes that will affect the 74 years left in your life. So you need to be careful. Don't spoil 74 years with a stupid decision in the first 24 years when you are not even sure of where you are going to. It is this serious that you can damage the future with a mistake today. The Jews consider a two-step marriage consisting of the betrothal where the two people separate and say, we are looking forward to a, pro, a, a, a period to marry. And then they look at the wedding when they say, okay, this is the establishment of the marriage bond. In both aspects, betrayal at any point must lead to divorce. It's only divorce that can cut a betrayal, uh, a betrothal. So the process is the same thing. The most important aspect is, the, is that there is a process. The Bible emphasizes the fact that unless God builds a home, all the builders labor in vain. In the process of building marriage, God is in the beginning of the process. Marriage is a spiritual gift. Courtship is a spiritual gift. Courtship, friendship is a spiritual gift. Courtship is a Marriage is a spiritual gift. And that's why you cannot afford to enter friendship. And you cannot afford to enter courtship. And you cannot afford to enter marriage because the three stages cannot be separated. That's why when you are not ready to marry, don't start friendship. Hello. If you are not ready to marry in the next one or two years, don't start 